So the way Adrian explains this, this warning message merely passed through Uppsala University. So it was sent from somewhere else? It didn't originate there. He traced it back from Pine Valley to Sweden to Brazil to Nova Scotia. Oh, you get no, the general stop, idea. Stop, Jackson. Please, this is ridiculous. We're wasting our time. We're never going to find out where that message came from. Alex, what's on your mind? Do you think you have dreams sometimes to warn you about the future? Well, it's never happened to me personally, but... Well, I have. When Dimitri was in the hospital, right before he died, I had this dream that he was drowning and I couldn't get to him. And then last night, I had this dream about Edmund and Guy. Guy, the stable manager, I meant. Right. Yesterday, Edmund said to me not to take Guy at face value. And then last night, I had this dream that, that he was trying to kill Edmund. Ah. So what does that mean? Well, certainly, Alex, you must know that Edmund, um, he feels very responsible for you. Yeah, I know that. What does that have to do with my dream, or why he doesn't trust Guy, then? Well, Alex, you are a beautiful woman. Edmund is a healthy man. You're a doctor. I'll let you figure it out, huh? No, uh, that's not it. That's not what I'm talking about. My subconscious, there are things that are trying to break through that... Like you're pushing Jeffrey Ashford down the stairs and killing him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what if Jeffrey's death is a warning of some kind? Or if Edmund is right about Guy? Or if my dream is trying to communicate something to me? That's a lot of what-ifs, isn't it? That's an awful lot of what-ifs, and that may be all they are. It's just what-ifs. No. What if I put Edmund in serious danger? Alex, as your attorney, and... As a friend, I would very strongly suggest you not let your imagination run away with you. Well, that's just it, Jackson. I don't know where my imagination begins and my subconscious ends. I have these, these memories, these fragmented thoughts, these words, these sounds, these dreams, and it's all part of a puzzle. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, okay. Let's say that that's true. Now, let me play devil's advocate for just a second here. Not everything, Alex, can be some missing piece of the puzzle. And we all know that sometimes dreams are just that, dreams, period, nothing else. Oh, thank you, Freud. You know, every day I walk around wondering that at any minute I am going to be struggling with what's real and what isn't. And the only thing that I can truly trust is my gut instinct. And you're telling me that your gut instinct tells you that Edmund's in danger? Yes. Why? Why? I mean, think about it. What has Edmund done that would have put him in danger? All he did was try to reach the director of Bryn Wood Sanatorium. Alex, you up yet? Yes. Yes, come in. Good morning. Hi. Uh, Jackson was just giving me an update from Adrian. Oh, great, great. Listen, I got an update as well. I've been on the phone trying to get through to Dr. Griffith all night. No luck. I called him again this morning. He's not taking my calls. I think he's avoiding me. Yeah, I think perhaps you're right. Let's see him avoid me in person. What? We're going to Wales. I want him to lie to me face to face. Tell me why he told me the British government sealed your records. No, absolutely not. Listen, you two, I have another appointment, but if you need me, you can reach me on my cell phone. No, okay. Thank you very much for stopping oh, by. Jack, we'll uh, be in touch. Yep. You bet. Timely exit, wouldn't you say? Appropriate. I appreciate you wanting to go over to England and talk to Dr. Griffith, but how much more time are you going to spend running around on my behalf? Until we get to the truth. What if it's dangerous? Why do you say that? Because I have this feeling that something terrible is going to happen. Alex, we talked about this before. This is just your, your fear of the unknown. It's no. just paralyzing you, okay? I will walk you through this to the end. No, I've made a decision and it's final. It's not yours to make. Of course it is. This is my life. Mine only. Not anymore. Well, if you care about me, then you would drop this. Don't you see I can't lose you too? Alex, nothing's gonna happen to me. I promise. You don't know that. 
you just letting fear of the past control your life. We talked about this. I managed to survive by blocking everything out, and there had to be a reason for that. So maybe I'm just not ready after all. Yes, you are. You are. And you are going to do this with me. I'm not going to let you out of my sight, whether you like it or not. Dr. Merrick, is everything all right? I had a message from my office. Oh, I hope you weren't in the middle of something. We just stopped by for a visit. Everything's much better, thanks to you. Good. I'm glad. You look so gorgeous. <laughs> Mommy and I moved. I'm in a new school now. You are? Do you love it? Karen talks about you all the time. She even wants to be a doctor. You do? Oh. <laughs> The social worker you put me in touch with helped me press charges against my husband. He's in custody awaiting trial. He'll never hurt me again. No, that's right. You were so brave to talk to the counselor and to the police. Brave girl. Are you still going to see that therapist? Oh, that's fantastic. Good. Do you want to learn how to ride? Because I could teach you and then we could go riding together. I love you. <laughs> I love you, Mommy. Oh, I love you too, Evan. Uh, come on, honey. We've taken up enough of Dr. Merrick's time. We'll be on our way. Bye, and thanks again. Okay, bye. I think that was 